Good morning. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. I a uh, little, little bit of a late breakfast brought my tea in here. So, one of the most common uh, comments that I get when I talk to people about how I like learning languages, uh, if they're even interested, which actually is often the case, people, in fact, very often say, "Yeah, I wish I spoke Spanish, especially here in, in the states." Um, I'd like to learn languages. You're lucky. You have a special talent for language learning. And if any of you out there are, you know, bilingual, trilingual, multilingual, I'm sure you've had that same comment. Gee, I don't have a special talent for, uh, you know, language learning. Yuan Tian Sai, as they say in Chinese, you know. Mm. So this seems to be that there's this perception, and it works two ways. Not only is demeaning to the efforts of people who work hard to learn languages, you know, it's just a talent, uh, but it also enables these people to, it's a good excuse for not putting in the effort. Or if they do start to put in the effort, they're kind of convinced that they don't have that special talent, and therefore they won't succeed. And, and I think a lot of that sense that I can't do it comes from the experience at school. So today on Twitter, there was an article, and I might even uh, uh, put a, uh, a link to it somewhere if I can find it in my Twitter feed. But it showed the, the countries in Europe where they have the largest number of speakers of other languages. I think, how many countries do people speak, you know, how many languages do people speak? So, five, four, three, two, one. That was one table. And the other table was, how many, in how many countries do people speak at least one other language? So, it's slightly different. And inevitably, you know, at the top was Liechtenstein or Finland and Holland. And at the bottom were France, Spain, England. And you know, if you analyze this thing, and probably Ireland as well, because if you analyze this thing, it comes out, what comes out of it is that the more people speak your language, the less likely you are to learn another language. And I think that can extend to the Japanese, the Chinese, the Russians, the Portuguese speakers in Brazil, wherever you are in an environment where a lot of people speak your language, you are less likely to learn an other language. Now, what has that got to do with talent? Well, I doubt if people in Liechtenstein, Sweden, Finland, uh, or for that matter, Singapore, or South Africa apparently is very multilingual. I doubt if, if those people have a special talent for language learning, that they have some genetic predisposition that developed because they lived in the forests of Scandinavia and they had to speak 10 different languages. It's just not so. The talent for language learning is evenly distributed across all ethnic divisions. Now, if we look back on, as children, we all learn our first language. We all eventually learn to walk unless we have some disability. Similarly with speaking, some people have don't hear or whatever, there could be some disability, but if there is no other disability, we all learn to speak our first language. We don't learn to speak that first language because we are instructed in that first language. We don't learn to speak that language because we have a talent for learning the language. We learn to speak that first language because we are exposed to so much of the language. Typically, listening, listening. As children, we hear the language around us. And it's that, it's that exposure to lots of that language that enables us to eventually speak the language. Now, I don't accept Noam Chomsky's theory that we have some innate universal grammar. And whenever I say that, there's always some college-educated linguist that comes up with some theory about how I don't understand it. But Chomsky basically says, because we don't get enough input, what he calls the paucity, P-A-U-C-I-T-Y, there's a word for non-English speakers, the lack of, comes from Latin, 
uh, lack of sufficient content, therefore we can't possibly simply acquire the language through I don't believe that at all, because all of the patterns in whatever language we learn, could it could be Swahili, it could be Tagalog, it could be, you know, Quechua, the patterns in that language, the brain will eventually sort them out. Just as the brain sorts out all kinds of patterns throughout our lives, that's what the brain is there for, is to find patterns in the things that we experience so that we aren't always experiencing them for the first time. We develop an ability to cope. That's what the brain does. And it does the same with language. So with enough exposure as children, we don't need our parents to correct us. Minimal impact. Otherwise, children of immigrants would all speak broken English because that's all their parents can give them. But they don't. They end up speaking the same as all of their peers. It's more the language environment that we live in. And therefore, children in countries where the television is in the original language, therefore they start getting exposure to the language, listening, at an early age, they then are more likely to learn another language. Because I'm sure that the methods of instruction, language instruction, in Finland, Germany, Switzerland, Portugal, Spain, is all more or less the same all follow the same theories of language instruction. However, it's the amount of exposure, the listening exposure that determines whether we're going to learn a language or not. Now, of course, the reading helps a lot. Stephen Krashen, great proponent of extensive reading. I find that reading is a great place to, to work on increasing your vocabulary. I like reading. I need to see the word written in order to remember it. Uh, however, I then need to, or, or to, to, I, I need to see it written in order to get a sense of what was said very often, because just the sound is not clear enough for me if it's a new word. But once I've seen it, and then I need to hear it many, many, many times. So I've shown you before my playlist at Link where some items I've listened to 30, 40 times. Um, it's that exposure, repeated exposure. Certainly the child is exposed to a very limited range of content, but over and over and over again. And that's essentially what we need to do. And I, I could show you again my listening statistics. That doesn't mean I don't struggle in the language. I'm struggling in Arabic. I have always struggled in Korean. I'm going to go back to Korean and improve. Every time I go back, I improve a little bit. It's not like instant, you know, there's no three weeks, three months to fluency. It's a lot of exposure. Obviously, if you're a Spanish speaker learning Portuguese or vice versa, you have so much of the vocabulary already, you can move quite quickly. But otherwise, for the brain to sort through what's that, you know, that experience takes a lot of exposure. Um, the other thing too, is that if the child can read, they'll learn more quickly, but the average two or three year old doesn't read. Adults can read. Therefore, you know, it's an added advantage that the adult learner has. Again, it's not a matter of talent, but the adult learner has a wide range of vocabulary in his or her own language. So there's no point in learning a new word in a new language if you don't even have that word in your own language because you don't know what they're talking about. You have to refer everything back to your base, to something you know. So uh, obviously, as adults, we have a large vocabulary. We have our life experience. We can read. So we use all of those things to learn faster. And I think that adults can learn languages faster than children because of those advantages. They may not achieve the same effortless native pronunciation that children can achieve because the adults have already got, you know, some other language system fixed in their brain and they have to kind of fight that to create some space for the new language. Whereas the kids just, it just flows into them. They're not inhibited. They're not afraid. To, they're not afraid to appear childish. Whereas adults are reluctant to appear childish and therefore there's, there are more inhibitions, but leaving that aside, adults can learn more quickly as long as they give themselves enough exposure. So, just to maybe uh, I'll stop it there. If anybody wants to see my listening statistics going back 10 years in all the different languages, the way we track them at Link, you'll see that I have invested 
thousands of hours in listening to languages. And that is the talent. The talent is the curiosity, the willingness to spend the time with, you know, it, it, listening to it or reading in other languages. And that's why people in Finland, Liechtenstein, Sweden, Holland, and so forth, smaller countries, typically are more motivated, more willing to listen to and read and commit themselves to being exposed to other languages. They have the need, they have more of a need, and that is the talent. That doesn't mean that someone who speaks English cannot become uh, a, a polyglot. One has only to look at Richard Simcott, uh, who is British and who speaks 40 odd languages extremely well. Okay, so I wanted to make that comment because it comes up all the time. I find it extremely annoying because it almost denies the effort that I put in and it's a bit of an excuse for people. That's not to say, however, that, you know, some people may pronounce better. Some people may, you know, use the language better. Uh, there's a whole range of differences in outcomes, but fundamentally everyone can learn one or more additional language and it's simply a matter of exposing themselves to the language well i say that i, I do believe i had a disagreement with someone over grammar I, I find as adults it's useful occasionally to refer to grammar without ever expecting to remember any of the rules or any of the tables but simply as an exposure to the language again so the occasional reference to grammar certainly doesn't hurt uh, but it's not the mainstay. The mainstay is, just as with children, massive exposure to the language, and that doesn't require any special talent. So that's what I wanted to get off my chest today. For you non-native speakers, there's another uh, idiom you can use. And uh, now I'll see what sorts of questions we've got here. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Now, let's see, where's my little... Handy dandy. I didn't bring my stylus. I like using a stylus. No stylus. Use my finger. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Huh? Where's our fearless leader? I'm not fearless. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Now I'm trying to. This is a. Da, 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 yeah. I'm currently learning Italian. Started Duolingo memorizing link. I'm struggling with input as I don't understand what they're saying. Should I continue to build the vocabulary? This is from Maoist. Moist none. I mean, I started Greek on Duolingo and I gave it up because there's a bunch of sometimes meaningful, sometimes not so meaningful, disconnected sentences. It didn't do it for me. I haven't used Memrise. I mean, Link, in the early days, uh, you know, in the early stages of learning a language, um, where have I lost it now? It pops around here. Where did that disappear to? And let me just check, check, check. Hmm. It's gone. How can that be? Anyway, the answer is that in the early stages of language, I listen more often to the same content and I um, do more review of words and phrases using our various what we call activities so it could be a flashcard could be multiple choice could be uh you know a closed test dictation so i spend more time oh message retracted most non retracted and that's what happened anyway the answer is in the early stages yes i do more vocabulary review but tied to the lesson that i'm studying in link in other words i don't Personally, I have not gone sort of the memorized Anki route where it's just deliberate study of vocabulary. There are plenty of bilingual religion, uh, regions in Spain too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And those people are totally bilingual. It's true. The best foreign speakers of English are definitely the Dutch and they watch our TV English. Well, the best. The Swedes are pretty good too. Or the Danes or the Norwegians. I just started learning China. I got a culture shock. I should say in English because of how different it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's different, Mustafa, but it's also, for that reason, very attractive because it's, it's, you're opening a door to a completely new world. I found it fascinating, but it's different. My cousin, I don't know if it is redundant to constantly look up 
the definitions of new words because he has been told that he should learn new words by heart. Is it true or not? You can't learn words by heart. The words, first of all, the first definition you look up may or may not explain the use of that word in your context. Uh, there typically is a range of meaning of a word. You won't know the word until you've seen it in many different contexts to get a real sense of how it's used. And you will learn a word and you will forget it. No matter how well you think you've learned it, you'll forget it again in many cases. So I personally, uh, I try to expose myself to as much content as possible. And I do, uh, I do uh, occasionally, especially in the early stages, use the sort of vocabulary review functions that we have. Still aprendiendo inglés, es bello, es muy obrigado, thank you, long time no see, sang and song. When watching TV, telenovela, strictly for listening comprehension, which is better, subtitles or no subtitles? I mean, this depends on your level. Uh, if you are watching the movie, telenovela, for fun, to stimulate your interest and as a sort of encouragement and reward, you can have English subtitles. When you get better, it's better to have Spanish subtitles. I personally don't spend a lot of time uh, with movies other than for enjoyment and stimulus and encouragement. I prefer to listen and read, but it's all a matter of what people enjoy doing. Yeah, John K.R., you should have seen the sentences uh, Duolingo threw at me for Greek, so I got out of there fast. Is your thinking, is your thinking or memory declining much with age? Uh, I, I don't have that impression. It's possible, but uh, I feel that I've learned the languages over the last 10 years. That is after the, it's like I'm 73 now. Uh, I'm learning languages faster than ever. I'm, I've started speaking in Persian after essentially three, four months of study. Uh, I spent much longer with my uh, Czech and even longer with my Russian and um, so on down the line. I don't feel it's, it's you got to keep the brain active. Uh, how many words do you need in order to start reading compelling content? If you mean reading compelling content away from the computer, I think it depends again on the language. But lots, the number is lots. Uh, if you're in inflected languages, you know, it could be 30 or 40,000 words. Uh, in English, it might be 15 or 20,000. I think you should use earphones much more than a loudspeaker for language learning. What do you think, Charles Powell? Yeah, I, I find that I'm better able to concentrate when I've got my ear pods or something in my ear. Besides which, I do a lot of moving around if I'm cleaning the house or if I'm exercising or I'm in the car. In the car, I'll put on the car. I don't want to drive in my car with my earphones on. Um, here we go. Gus, I understand I link many stories in Greek and have been listening to them many times. Then I turn on the Greek news and I hardly understand anything. It's a little discouraging. Okay, Gus. The many stories give you the basic structures of the language, the most common verbs. You get a sense of the sounds of the language. You can actually start speaking. But whether it be Greek or any other language, to get from there to the news is quite a distance. And I'm experiencing that now in my Arabic. And that's where the lack of intermediate content is a problem. Uh, I did uh, have some Greek, I found a Greek podcast about the building of the Parthenon, which I had transcribed, I paid to have it transcribed. I'm not sure I imported them into Link or not. Uh, if you can find good audio content, you can go to a, um, a uh, automatic transcription website. You can Google automatic transcription. Vocalmatic is one of them. Take the news, throw it onto Vocalmatic, and you'll get the text. Alternately, you can read newspapers in Greek, which will have a lot of the same vocabulary. But I find it's best to to get you know matching matching. Uh, text to your audio. Uh, if we could have more, if we could have, we should really extend the mini stories concept with a lot of repetition, but expand the vocabulary into political and economic terms. Uh, you just have to fight your way through it. That's what it is. I would do more reading of newspapers. Uh, okay, how useful do you think passive listening is? For example, I listen to Rai radio every day as I have a lot of dead time driving. Is this to correct? It's not bad, it's good, it's giving you a sense of the rhythm, the intonation of the language. When I do that, I become curious because there's simply so many words I don't understand 
And that's why uh, either I go to something that has a transcript, which might be an ebook, and Il Narratore, by the way, Craig, ilnarratore.com is an excellent resource, and they offer audio ebooks, matching audiobooks and ebooks. So you can then import the ebook into Link. Uh, other than that, you have to use uh, these transcription services. But I am always motivated when I'm listening to things that I don't understand. I want to find some way that uh, I can get to read it so I can understand. Have I, uh, how, uh, have you ever used the Roman room method or any memorizing technique? No, I, I simply have never been willing uh, to invest the time uh, into these systems for memorizing. I just allow the exposure to eventually do the trick. Oh, I recently started learning Finnish. Any tips for agglutinative languages? Sorry. Uh, I have, I mean, I think uh, Japanese and Korean would qualify as agglutinative languages. Turkish, when I go to do Turkish, is as well. To me, it's not really an issue. It's just every language has its own way of saying things that you have to simply get used to. And you get used to it through a lot of exposure. I would get on Link for sure. We have some Finnish content there. And I would look for other. Uh, resources. The advantage with Finnish compared to me with Arabic and Persian is that it is written in the Latin alphabet that make things, makes things a lot easier. Some people recommend to watch the same movie over and over again. What do you think? Well, you know, I couldn't do that. Um, you know, the um, the, again, I quote very often, I quote the German neuroscientist who said, the brain requires repetition, but it also requires novelty. And every time you're going back to something you've done before, it's no longer novel. And so the brain is less attentive to that. Uh, I would not do that. But on the other hand, I mean, it certainly would help help you, you know, get a better handle on, on that content, as long as you're still curious. Maybe you missed a bunch of dialogue the first time and you want to go back in and try and see if you can't get that dialogue. So somehow the brain is keen. Then I guess it's not such a bad thing to do. It depends on what you're motivated to. I personally could not do that. Once I've seen the movie, I've seen it. Although, no, I shouldn't say that. I wouldn't watch the same movie again and again. But when I started into Russian and I got these videos from the store, Ruski Mir in Vancouver, and there were some lovely movies I watched maybe two or three times. Uh, but uh, no more than that. And it was like, you know, three months later to see if I could pick up a little bit more of the dialogue. How to stop the anxiety when trying to approach and you are able to practice with? Well, you know, anxiety. To me, if, if the big thing is comprehension. If I can understand what the person is saying, I don't mind stumbling. Uh, and if, if it's someone who is prepared to be patient with me, I don't worry at all. If I'm in a situation, you know, uh, even, um, you know, when I was in St. Petersburg and I go to the train station and I, and Russian comprehension is pretty good, but I don't know what the person, the woman behind the counter, I want to buy a train ticket. I don't know what she's going to say. So when I said, I want a train, I was going to Viborg. So I said, I want a ticket to Viborg. And she goes, blah, blah, blah. and I don't know what she asked me. Uh, and then I asked her to repeat. And then I understood what she was asking. If I had already been in that situation before, then I would have anticipated what she was going to say, then I would have been better prepared. So to some extent, if you don't know what's going to come at you, it's, it, 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 it helps to have been in that situation before. But at any rate, the big issue is comprehension. If I struggle to speak, it doesn't bother me. It's just an attitude. Very often, we create our own problems. Um, if I can understand, I'm happy. I don't have any anxiety. How important is physical activity for your language learning? <laughs> Let's say that the language learning makes it more likely that I will work out every day. Uh, because working out is kind of boring. And um, I couldn't also just stand there and listen to the language. But if I combine working out and the uh, listening to the language, I'm happy to do it. I feel I'm not wasting my time. So the language learning is important to my physical activity, more than the reverse. Roman says, hi all. 
Wojciech Walaj. Could you give advice what we should do when we have boring, but we must learn for work? Okay. I mean, obviously the best situation is that you're interested, interested in the language, interested in the subject matter. Uh, I would, uh, I would try and find things interesting in the language. The more you are not deliberately learning the language, but learning about something through the language, the better you're going to learn. Do you have a favorite Spanish regional accent? No, I mean, I think they're all fun. I like being in Spain. Uh, I like, uh, you know, the Argentinian accent. Um, I find that uh, places like Mexico and Peru, it's fairly, fairly um, standard. Uh, I like them all. Could you give it? Uh, uh, how to stay motivated when people think learning other languages is useless? It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Uh, you think you can reach A2 in Chinese in three months studying every day? Yes. What part of language learning do you find most frustrating? Most frustrating is the sense that we're not progressing as quickly as we would like. That's the most frustrating thing. Uh, right now, I mean, because it is does take time. And so we're reading and listening and reviewing words, and we have that sense that we're not making any progress, when in fact we are. And that's part of why we have our statistics linked to remind you that you actually have progressed. You've acquired a lot of languages. My pages at Link are now more white. I understand more things. But the biggest frustration is the sense that you're just not making any progress, when in fact you are. Giovanni, a last question. Do you think the movie technique is a great way to learn with movies? You watch our favorite TV shows scene by scene to learn. Okay, I mean, it depends what you're interested in. I've said before, I, to me, if I'm going to watch a TV program, I have to sit in front of the computer or the television. Whereas listening, I can do it while working out. And reading is relaxing. So I prefer to read and listen. But people who like to watch movies, that's fine. Uh, it's stimulating to watch a movie. My wife was watching a Turkish uh, soap opera like series there and it was fun I couldn't understand anything but it kind of says gee I'm gonna learn Turkish and if I had been studying Turkish I probably would have sat there with her to watch it at least for a while but they're kind of silly stories so you lose interest how fast do you get used to using nouns with gender correctly in languages as French Spanish Romanian it takes a long time gender is a bit like tones in Chinese it gradually over time improves I don't think it ever gets perfect but if you get your accuracy up over 50 percent 60 70 80 certain of the gender you know with the agreement and the adjective and stuff is going to flow out naturally and others you'll make mistakes at i mean how many english how many non-native speakers of english do you hear say he go in other words the third person singular lots they've been at it for 10 years they still can't get the fact especially if the, the subject is buried in the sentence the car that I took to the store the other day uh, run slow instead of runs because they lose track of the fact that this is a third person and therefore they make mistakes. These are minor mistakes, not a big deal. How fast do you do? Robert, has any university begun using Link in their curriculum? Not that I'm aware of. We would love to work with universities or any universities, uh, schools, uh, corporate language learners. We'd like to work with them and, and advise them, but it's a whole attitude. The attitude that I try to get across in these sessions, that has to then be part of a university or school or a corporate learning environment that, uh, that wants to use Link. And, and we can make an attractive deal. Don't forget too, by the way, that we have a referral program at Link. And if you go to your profile, you'll see the referral program. And if you can persuade other people in your class, in your course at university, uh, at your place of work to use Link, then you get 20%. Uh, what's with the delay from learning something to improving further down the line without having done anything? It's really spooky sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> So if I understand the question correctly, it means that um, you'll, you'll work on a language and then you'll put it aside and you go back to it three months and you're better. 
And I have called this the gestation period. I've called this the benign neglect period. But there's no question, I have experienced this many times, that when I go back to a language that I studied before, I'm better. I might slip a little in terms of my vocabulary, but very quickly I'm where I was and I'm better in the language. I don't know how the brain works, but that is certainly something that I have experienced. Ah, it's easy for me to write in English. I think words come out of my mind so easy, but when I speak, I feel so hard to forget words. Yeah, that's it. Of course, when we write, we're under no pressure, unless we're writing an exam or something. And, and we can look things up and so forth. When we're speaking, there's more stress. And that's why if you're speaking with someone who makes you feel comfortable, you do better, typically. If you're speaking with someone who makes you feel uneasy, you won't do as well. So yeah, there's more stress. You got to think, find the words on the fly. You can't look things up. It's a little more difficult, but you just have to keep going, keep doing it. More listening, more reading and speaking whenever you have the opportunity. I've been learning German for a year, but I still don't feel comfortable with the language. What should I do? There's always tons of words to learn. Luis Enrique, welcome to the world of language learning. It takes time. You just have to trust the process. You know, remember why you're learning the language. You want to learn the language and you just stay with it. And eventually you slowly, slowly get better. Uh, language is majoring in a language like Chinese a good or bad idea? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to answer? Majoring in anything is a good idea if that's what you're interested in. Steve, did you ever find reading Japanese is easier than listening? No, not really. In fact, I didn't. It, it, I find reading Japanese tough because they use hiragana, katakana, and kanji. I prefer to read Chinese in straight kanji. But uh, listening, I didn't find. No, because I did so much listening. I never found listening to Japanese difficult. And part of that is I don't mind when I don't understand. But I just keep listening and listening and listening, and eventually I understand more. Uh, Mustafa, yeah, imitating actors' uh, pronunciation is an excellent idea. The more we imitate, the better. Grazie per la tua risposta. Mi piace il sito. Ben fatto buon lavoro. Thank you, Craig. Craig. Craig, by the way, if you were the one, I don't know whether you are Italian or you're learning Italian, but Rai Due has some excellent, excellent content. And uh, again, without transcript. But we also have a lot of good stuff in link with transcript. I did the uh, Promessi Sposi and Pinocchio at link, which was great, by the way. Being able to browse a list of our known words in link would be great. And I guess it'd be quite easy to implement the system in some way. It has to have this list somewhere. It'd be the only way to work. Uh, it, it would be, yeah, I, I mean, it has come up before. I don't know whether we, in fact, do keep a list of your known words. I don't know how, I would never do it. Uh, I see my known words all the ta time in my text as I'm reading. Uh, we have to also be a little careful. I mean, if there's a big demand for it, if we can do it, fine. But we have to be very careful that we don't clutter our site with so many different functions that satisfy user A or B or C, but are not necessarily that useful because it just makes the site more and more complicated. And if anything, we have too many functions there and we should be reducing them. People have trouble understanding what we want them to do. A lot of people just like to be told, do this, then do this, then do this with fewer bells and whistles and options. So I'd have to be persuaded that that was a really useful thing to do and I'm not sure it is. What do you think of chunk learning a language? Well, there's been a lot of, you know, people write stuff and there's theories about, you know, describing things that are pretty well obvious. Obviously, we learn, we learn phrases, we learn chunks of the language. It's less like this term collo uh, collocations. I mean, we have to learn which words go together with which other words. And therefore, when I read a language, I regularly save phrases. These are chunks that I want to learn. And now with text-to-speech in most languages, you can actually hear the phrase and it's all a part of learning. When you talk about, you know, genders in Romance languages, if you learn the phrase with the, you know, the adjective in there, it's going to help you remember the gender. Uh, if you are doing Chinese and you learn a phrase and you hear the intonation, it's going to help you with 
the intonation with the tones. So learning phrases, chunks, collocations, whatever you want to call it, is obviously a good thing to do. Do you think it's bad to learn languages because you want respect from others? Whatever motivates you is good. Uh, I wish Link had polytonic alphabet support for Greek. The text-to-speech doesn't work. Mm, I'd have to go back in and check. It seems to me that the, the, the text-to-speech did work, but I, I can't answer that right now. Um, you know, Greek is not one of our main supported languages. Uh, I could look into it. We do in, in Japanese and in, in Chinese and a bunch of others. We do have a phonetic sort of... Uh, uh, transliteration there. Uh, I'd have to, I'll look into it. I noticed that too. Cognitive science says we need some downtime to let the information get into long term and sleep is important. All right, Scott, that's interesting. Uh, with already known vocabulary that we recognize during quick reading. Yeah, and Nikos, I can't comment uh, right now. It's not, we have been asked for that before. Uh, Mark, who is in charge of Link, said we're not going to do it. I can't give you all the details on why, but uh, yeah, I can't say much more right now. And I'm going to have to leave a little early today, so I'm going to rush through these. Is the immersive method worth it? I don't know what the immersive method is, but uh, to some extent, Link is immersive because you are immersing yourself in content. Uh, I find that to that extent, the mini stories, which jump you into an intermediate level of content, but with enough listening and reading and reviewing, you can get a toehold on the language and move along. And if you have any issues of grammar, you can look up the grammar. You can look it up by Googling, or we have our grammar resources now in a number of languages. And again, you'll find those in your profile. It's not a very obvious place to put them, but they are there. Um, is it hard to find, is it hard to find good content in Chinese with pinyin? What are your recommendations? I don't, I'm not, so other people might recommend, I'm not doing Mandarin, so I don't know, but you just Google. Yes, uh, Mike Gargano asks if I learned Cantonese. Yes, I did. Hello, Steve. How do you approach repetitive listening to strike a balance between novelty and repetition? Daniel. So, uh, I find, obviously, I like to bring in new, more difficult content, for example, in Arabic, but yes, it's a struggle and I can't really understand it. So then I go back to stuff that I've done before. In all of my mini stories, or in Who Is She that we have in Arabic, in the early lessons, there are very few words that are still yellow. Most are all white, I know. But as I progress, there's, you know, lesson 20, 30, 40, 50, there's 10, 15, 20, 30 words that I still haven't learned. And even in the early lessons, there's structures that, you know, when I first went through them, I didn't realize the significance that this might be a certain form in Arabic. So I find when I go and back, go back and listen again and again, I'm noticing things every time, something I hadn't noticed the time before. And so I find that searching for these things that are new or rediscovering things that I've, you know, I've, I've sort of learned in subsequent lessons and I now see them in that earlier lesson and I hadn't noticed it the first time around, I find all of that sort of interesting. But it is a conundrum. And I get back to this fact that we don't have enough intermediate content. So I'm bouncing back and forth between content that's too difficult for me and stuff that I've now been over 10, 15, 20 times. Uh, difficult question, Daniel. I can't give you a better answer than that. Steve, I need to get study plan for learning French, English, upper media. Get on link, listen and read. You don't need so much detailed planning. Make sure you put in, listen an hour a day, it's easy to get in wherever, on transportation or whatever, and then follow up by reading and, and uh, reviewing words. Uh, how to understand without looking at subtitles? Well, improve your listening ability. Uh, silly question, how to distinguish lies and lives when the speaker... I mean, to understand when the speaker speaks quickly, you have to improve your listening ability, and that takes a lot of Listening, uh, you know what? Unfortunately, the Arabic script that comes across here is so small and my reading ability is so poor, I'm not gonna take up a lot of time to read through it, but uh, I'm sorry when I get better. 
Uh, you talk about attitude. Could you sum up this attitude philosophy in a few sentences? Is it about enjoying the language and the process so you stick to it every day? Okay, Jeff, the attitude is, I like the language. I think I can learn the language. I kind of enjoy learning it, but at any rate, it's, it's something that I so much want to achieve that I'm prepared to put in the time. I believe that the method I'm using is correct. I believe it's a worthwhile place for me to be. So while I'm learning the language, I'm not thinking about, gee, I wish I were doing something else. It's that sort of positive, I can do it. I want to do it. I believe I can do it. That's the attitude. And of course, as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, curiosity, I'm curious. I want to discover this world, the world that's behind that language. All of those things are driving me. And in that regard, if you have interesting content, compelling content, that's also going to drive you. Um, yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, Mr. Steve, do you think a person living in another country so far is your mother language? No, you cannot lose your mother. I mean, there might be some rare example, but overwhelmingly, I don't think so, and I don't forget those languages that I've spoken a lot. Any tips to get to the, lots of listening and reading? What is the hardest language that you know? They're all hard in different ways. Uh, you know, Chinese because of tones and characters, Slavic languages because of their complicated grammar, Arabic because of the script and the grammar, they're all different. The, the issue is how attractive is the language to you? If it's attractive enough, you just blaze through the difficulties. Uh, I've been using TPRS for Mandarin. I've been studying for a year and I still have problems recalling words. Even in class, I struggle. Yeah, a TPRS, I mean, I have not been in class learning Mandarin using TPRS. Uh, to me, the function is it's the same. It's a lot of listening and reading and the brain will gradually get used to it. Uh, TPRS, I mean, to me, being in a, a classroom environment with a lot of non-native speakers would, would discourage my language learning. I feel that most of the language learning, I have to do it on my own. So I, my advice would be, don't worry about what happens in the classroom. The classroom is tension. Either you're annoyed that someone can't answer questions or you're concerned that you're not keeping up. There's a whole bunch of tension in the classroom that I'm not a big fan of. If you're learning on your own, it's you and the text, you don't understand, you listen again, you read again, you're constantly pushing yourself forward into the language by yourself. Ah, uh, by the way, I think you're Gene. <laughs> okay. Is there something I got? Uh, yeah, green whiskey. Uh, can you you can you laugh, can you become fluent in a year? Uh, depends on the language. Any tips to get the comprehension in French? Sometimes I understand when I look at the subjects when I don't. This whole business of comprehension is linked. Uh, how did you learn? Well, Mandarin in one year, full time, every day, six seven hours, three hours a day, one on one, paid for by the Canadian government and then another three, four hours of listening and reading. How many times should I repeat the same lesson a day or week? Okay, again, repeating the same lesson is not because you listen to the same lesson now over and over and over again. It's because you go lesson one, two, three, four, five, back to lesson one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to lesson one. Be guided by what, by what you want to do. Reading a book, seven financial studies for, it has more than one, a thousand pages and for no other words. Should I note the unknown words or just keep going? I would just keep going. You understand the, you can figure out what the meaning is. You understand the context, you're interested in it. Uh, what are the best language, link is the best language learning app. Uh, so uh, getting back to this, uh, yeah, just keep going. I find that any word I look up, Although if a word keeps on appearing and you simply don't know what it means, it starts to bug you, look it up. But you may forget the meaning, even though you look it up. If there were a language that you could master just with the click of a finger, which would it be? <laughs> I don't know. When you see video with a lot of words in the subtitles, what should you do? Well, then obviously, um, keep going. Your influency in three months, you think this is possible? No. I was listening to a neuroscientist in Petersburg who said to make activities more difficult than is comfortable to stimulate the mind. I think that applies to language learning too. Uh, there is a very famous uh, Hungarian, Chik Chik Zvichai, I, 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 very complicated name, but the gist of it is you want to have, as I understand it, to be in what's known as the sort of state of flow, 
is when you have a challenge that's difficult, but you can actually cope with it. So if it's too difficult, like my Arabic podcasts, it's tough. If it's just a little difficult, then I feel a great sense of achievement and the brain likes to feel this sense of achievement. So I think that's the ideal place to be. How do you improve your listening comprehension of native speakers in Mandarin when they speak very fast? Everybody speaks their native language very quickly. Uh, it's just more of the same. I don't think there's any... Uh, do you th All these questions about how do you react when people are not nice to you, I I'm not going to answer them because I don't deal with those things. It doesn't bother me. I just focus on learning the language. Uh, if you happen to... Asan, do, do stay 10 minutes. He will answer it. There's 10 minutes to live. What earphones are you using when exercising? AirPods from I, from Apple. Uh, da, da, da. Why do Canadians pronounce sorry like, like that? I don't know. I'm thinking we should start with authentic material languages, then work backwards. I found that many stories have been a very good sweet spot. Don't you ever make any effort to improve your writing skills in the language you're learning? No, because I don't need to write, but his writing is very good. If I, I had to write Chinese, I had to write in French when I was at university there. Uh, I think I is the free version of Leak helpful? I think so. We have a lot of content there that you can download from our libraries. You can only import five. I find the import function very useful, and you can't create a lot of links, but the, as a repository of a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, audio and text material in a number of languages. It's, it's, it's unique and definitely go there. Yeah, Daniel, I don't know anything about TPRS uh, resources online for Japanese, but you can get, get on our forum at link and ask other people. Uh, okay. And with that, I'm going to cut it short today as it was. We went uh, almost 48 minutes. So uh, there we go. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we look forward to the next one. Thank you. Bye.